Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create alerts in Grafana. I'm gonna walk you through the creation of a very simple alert that monitors disk usage, and then that alert will be sent to a Slack channel. So in order to follow along, you will need to be an administrator of a Grafana instance, and you will also need permissions to create uh, Slack apps inside of a Slack workspace. So let me show you what the alert is going to look like in Slack when we're done. And then we'll create a Slack app, and then we will create the alert inside of Grafana. Okay, so I'm inside of my Slack workspace, and I created a dedicated channel for alerts, and that channel name is called Alerts. And inside of the Alerts channel, you'll see that there is a message from Grafana, and it's alerting me on the disk usage for two nodes. So I have a Raspberry uh, Pi cluster set up, and apparently two nodes have reached my alerts threshold and so Grafana sent this alert. It gives me some inf information on which, uh, which nodes hit that threshold, and then it gives me the actual value. And so this is percentage of disk used, and I set the threshold pretty low. I set it at uh, 40%, so when disk usage is above 40%, uh, the uh, alert will be triggered and it will send a message to this Slack channel. Uh, so both of these devices have disk usage over 40%. Okay, so now that we know what our alert message will look like, we can go ahead and create a Slack app. And uh, this Slack app is going to give us a webhook URL that Gra uh, Grafana can use to publish messages to the alerts channel. So I'm going to navigate to uh, the workspace and then workspace settings and administration. Under administration, I'm going to select manage apps. Okay, and then here I'm going to select build and we will create a new app. Okay, so I'm going to select create new app from scratch and we'll give it a name. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. We'll call it Grafana Alerts. Okay. And it's going to be with the uh, Tech with Moss workspace. And I'll select Create App. Okay. So uh, once we've created the app, we have to provide some basic information. The only thing that we have to concern ourselves uh, with here is incoming webhooks. So we want to enable incoming webhooks. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And from here, I'm going to activate incoming webhooks. And then if I scroll down, it gives me uh, webhook URLs for my workspace. No webhooks have been created yet, so we're going to create a new one. I'll select add new webhook to workspace. And then we're, uh, we are going to select the channel that this application uh, that this webhook is going to have permissions to uh, to publish messages to. Okay, so now the webhook has been created, and uh, this is the webhook URL that we will need to copy into our Grafana instance so that Grafana can uh, publish me uh, messages to our alerts channel. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this webhook URL. I'm just going to click copy. And then I'm going to navigate to my Grafana instance. And in Grafana, I'm going to go to the alerting tab and open that up. I'm going to navigate to the notification channels tab. And we're going to add a notification channel. And we'll call this... Um, Slack alerts channel. The type here is not going to be email. We're going to select Slack. And then under optional Slack settings, the only thing that we really need here um, is the webhook URL. So there's other options that we can add here, uh, like an icon URL. We can mention uh, people in Slack or groups, or we can mention an entire channel. So there's a lot of useful things that we can do in the optional settings. But just to get our uh, alerts working, 
uh, in Sentinel Alert. All we need is the webhook URL. So we can test it out. I'll select test and it says test notification was sent. So let's check our alerts channel. And we can see that there was a um, alerting message, a test notification was sent to our alerts channel just now. So it looks like it's working correctly. So we've set up uh, the new uh, notification channel for uh, Slack. Okay, so the first step was creating the uh, notification channel. And now that we've done that, we can create the, uh, the actual alert. And the alert is based off of uh, dashboard data. So if I navigate home, and then uh, I'll open up this dashboard called Raspberry Pi's node exporter metrics. This dashboard uh, is monitoring my Raspberry Pi cluster using node exporter. So I have node exporter set up on each of the Raspberry Pis, and then Prometheus is scraping the uh, node exporter endpoint. Uh, and I've set up a few sections uh, for different uh, categories of metrics. So I have a memory section where I'm monitoring things like memory usage, uh, CPU utilization, and then also a section for uh, disk monitoring. And under the disk section, I only have a single panel and it's monitoring the uh, percentage of used uh, disk space. So of the overall um, available disk space, what percentage of that disk space is being used right now? So that's what this panel is telling me. And this is the panel that we're going to use for uh, the alert. So what I'm going to do is uh, edit this panel. And uh, inside of the panel, we can see the query for uh, disk usage. And then to create an alert, we have the alert tab. But when I go to the alert tab, you'll notice I get this, uh, basically an error message saying, uh, template vari variables are not supported in alert queries. And what that means is I have created uh, template variables for this dashboard, uh, host and instance. So the dashboard updates based off of what variables I've selected uh, from this dropdown. So because I'm using those, I can't actually create an alert inside of this dashboard. So what I'm gonna to have to do, there's one way to get around this. So in the query uh, in the query tab, I can create a second query and it can essentially duplicate this query but not use the template uh, variables. And that second query I can actually disable but I can still utilize, uh, I can still create an alert based off of that disabled query. That's one workaround, but what, uh, what I'm gonna do is create a new dashboard dedicated for alerts. So uh, we won't use this dashboard at all, but we will uh, use this query. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this query to my clipboard and I'll exit out. And then we're going to create a new dashboard. And from here, I'm going to select uh, add an empty panel. And in the uh, query field, I'm going to paste in that query. And it doesn't show me any data because uh, in this dashboard, I haven't created the instance variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove, uh, remove that variable reference in both of uh, in both of the metrics in this query. Okay, so I'm gonna remove that. Okay, so now um, we get the disk usage for all of the Raspberry Pis, and there's four Raspberry Pis, so we get disk usage for each one. And the legend is a little messy, so let's clean that up. Uh, I'll first um, reference instance. And then I'll reference uh, the device. So that should make the legend look a little bit cleaner. Okay. And on top of that, we want to modify the units. So right now it's just showing uh, integers on the Y axis. So from standard options, the standard drop options drop down under units, I'm going to select percent 
0 to 100. Okay, and now we get the percentage of uh, used uh, disk. Okay, and I'm also going to update the panel title. We'll call it uh, RPI disk usage. Okay, and I'd also like to just quickly walk through this query just so you kind of understand uh, what it's doing. So the first metric here is getting the Raspberry Pi's available bytes on the file system. We're filtering the, uh, the data that's returned. Uh, we're filtering the device and we're saying device should not be equal to uh, MMC block 0p6. And then also the device should not be equal to the temp file system. Okay, so this is just returning the root device. And then we're dividing the value of uh, available bytes. So we're dividing that value here uh, by the overall size of the file system. And we're passing in the same filter for the device uh, on that metric as well. Okay, so now that we've gone over the query, let's uh, navigate to the alert tab and create the alert. So I'm gonna select create alert. And uh, the name, I'll just capitalize alert here. And then Immediately after the name, we have the evaluation period for the alert. I'm gonna modify this. I'm gonna say the alert should evaluate uh, every 10 seconds for one minute. So that evaluation period will be the period in which the alert condition is pending. So if the Raspberry Pi's disk usage, uh, let's say the threshold was like 40% uh, used disk space, right? And that condition was true. So the Raspberry Pi's disk usage was above 40%. It was above the threshold. This alert is going to evaluate uh, that condition for every 10 seconds for one minute. And if the condition remains true after that evaluation period, it will go into an alerting state. So it will go from a pending state to an alerting state after that evaluation period. And after defining the evaluation period, we can uh, define conditions. Uh, one or more conditions. Here I'm going to define just a single condition and it will be when, and then I'm gonna select uh, this operator, the max value of query A from uh, five minutes till now is above 40, okay? So I'm gonna set the threshold at 40% at disk usage. Then uh, this alert will be triggered and it will send an alert to the Slack channel. So if one or more Raspberry Pi's disk usage is above 40%, then it is going to trigger this alert, okay? And under uh, conditions, we can also uh, set different parameters on when there is no data or there's an error. Uh, so if there's no data or all values are null, we can set the state of the alert to just no data, or we can actually say that it should be alerting uh, in an alerting state if there is uh, no data. And then if uh, there's an execution error or timeout, we can also uh, set the state as either keep the last state or uh, set it to be an alerting state. And then in the notification section, we can uh, send to notification channels. We can send the alert to uh, notification channels that we've defined. We've only defined one notification channel. So if I select the plus sign here, we have the Slack alerts channel. So I'm gonna select that. And then we can add a message to the alert. Um, what you'll notice if I go back to Slack and I show you the, the alert, uh, up here we have the instance uh, names, the IP address and the, the port of the Raspberry Pis. Uh, this is the message field, okay? So if I go back to the, the dashboard, uh, I can use that same message just by doing dollar sign and then the variable name, which was instance. And this is the same message that I used for this alert. So this is the result of that message. It just printed out the, the uh, instance variable value, okay? So you can keep that if you want or if you don't, because it's kind of redundant, you can see the instance information anyway. Um, I'm going to delete it. I think it'll look a little bit cleaner without it. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that you can reference variables in the message field. And then we can also add tags as well.
So I think that's all we need to do for this alert. Uh, what I'm going to do before testing uh, this alert rule is I'm going to save the dashboard. Uh, you have to save the dashboard and I'm going to call it um, RPI alerts. And if I go back into the panel here and I go to alerts, I can test this rule. So if I select test, you can see that the state is currently pending because it's in the evaluation period. So after a minute, uh, the condition should still be true and the alert should be sent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate over to the alerting section in Grafana and I can see the uh, disk usage alert. It's in a pending state and, uh, and then we'll uh, wait for it to uh, reach an alerting state. Okay, so now it's in an alerting state and if I navigate back to uh, the Slack channel, the alert Slack channel, we can see the, um, the alert show up in our alerts Slack channel, the same as we did uh, up here as well, but without the instance uh, variable reference in the message field, okay? And we get that information anyway. This is pulling the information from the legend, uh, which I think is kind of nice. Uh, I don't know exactly how to format the value because it would be nice if this could be formatted so that it shows that it's a percentage and without, um, you know, so many decimal places. Uh, but if you do know how to do that uh, and format this value, uh, please comment below in the video. Uh, I would definitely like to know how to do that. So that's pretty much all there is to it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it informational. Uh, if you did, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. There is a new system for alerting in Grafana 8. And real quickly, I'll show you the documentation page for uh, Grafana 8 alerts. It's currently uh, in beta and it's an opt-in feature. So you can enable uh, Grafana 8 alerts if you have uh, Grafana 8. Uh, you can, when you're installing uh, Grafana, in the grafana.ini configuration file for uh, your Grafana instance, you can enable beta features. And this beta feature is uh, called ng alerts. Uh, so you can enable that when you're uh, installing a new instance of Grafana if you wanna play around with this feature. One downside uh, with the Grafana 8 alerts is that there isn't a provisioning feature for it. And with legacy alerts, you can provision dashboards automatically using Ansible. So you can export the dashboard as JSON and then uh, using Ansible, you can provision an entire Grafana instance along with dashboards and alerts defined within those dashboards. So you don't have to upload individual dashboards once you've actually uh, provisioned the instance using Ansible. And that functionality is not yet available for Grafana 8 alerts. Uh, unfortunately, so you can't uh, you can't use provisioning yet with Grafana 8 alerts. But if you'd like me to do a video on Grafana 8 alerts, uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, I think it's a pretty cool system. It's a a cool new way of uh, doing alerting in Grafana. Uh, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a, a video on Grafana 8 alerts. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.